Hello gamers, it's nice. I hope everyone who leaked my nodes is having a nice day. Today, I wanted to briefly discuss the August live stream for MMO Ashes of Creation, which is perhaps the most important live stream Intrepid will have outside of an Alpha 2 announcement or a release stream. Nodes are perhaps one of the most important, unique, and innovative MMO systems we've seen to date, and one of the many things that helps this game stand out outside of the open development approach, of course. In today's video, I don't want to just do a breakdown as I'm sure plenty of those will exist and I highly recommend watching the stream in its entirety which will be in 4K on the official Ashes of Creation channel linked in the description. Also, a lot of info was thrown at us so is there no one else and I will be giving our first takes on the showcase live here on the channel tomorrow, the day right after the stream in a special emergency episode of the Voices of Vera Ashes of Creation podcast. Be sure to follow Is There No One Else on Twitch as well as we do these discussions live every Tuesday normally. For today's video, I want to keep it short and mostly just discuss a specific subject matter for now. But first, I would like to thank all of our channel members here on screen. And I wanted to thank each of you who support the channel, whether it's through a membership, subscribing, or just coming by to live streams or liking the video. Now let's begin. I want to start off by saying this stream looked visually impressive. The moment where Steven approached this stage three node was just awe inspiring. And um, upon receiving a virtual tour of this village, I just sat back and wondered the possibilities of a node's final stage, the metropolis. Like if it looks like this at stage three, can you guys imagine the sheer complexity and impressiveness that we will see with the metropolis level node? Also, can we please get hashtag Applesmith trending and spammed in the comments below? That was probably one of my favorite moments of the stream is when we all noticed the guy was just hammering apples there. I loved it. The UI, of course, is a placeholder, but we got to see the POV and UI interactions that a mayor will have. Most information about nodes remained consistent from what we already knew, including the fact that we will still have the same four types of nodes being the scientific, economic, divine, and the focus of today's video, the military node. The military node is one we've had the least information on in my opinion. We kind of knew there was some sort of last man standing PVP combat style to select the mayor, but we never really got great detail on how that would work. Other things that have been spoken on was the reduced corruption penalties for their citizens of a military node and the ability to have bounty hunters. Well, we finally got some details on this node type. Things have always felt unsure on the military nodes. Obviously, everything is subject to change, but military nodes, it always felt like they were the least consistent with it. There were even talks about a champion system style at one point to kind of offset the fact that Ashes of Creation, well, was just not balanced around 1v1s despite its rock, paper, scissors ideology towards their archetypes. The reason I was super excited for the info we received was because just this week on the Voices of Vera episode 7, we were predicting and suggesting how a military node's last man standing should feasibly take place. All of us, including Is There No One Else, Chat, and myself had ideas. But it will turn out that the last option that we settled on will actually be spot on and this in combination with other theories we came up with was precisely what Intrepid had planned. Let's take a quick listen. Miko says, I remember an old system I ran online. People would get to sign up and then they would get teleported to an instance dueling field or an event date. You know what? Duh. I didn't even think about them just getting instantly transported to an instance place. That makes it so much simpler than what I said. Yeah, that's like 30 times better than what I said like making it in this certain area and then no yeah just yeah that that's that's just so simple just have some little playing coliseum thing that everyone's teleported into if you signed up and the people that were online they're teleported there and if it's those 10 those 10 duke it out and the last one standing wins yeah you know what? there we go i, I think that's probably the simplest thing anyone <laughs> said i i think i was making it too complicated i like what he said <laughs> i i like what that guy said <laughs> Yeah, that that was actually how I was envisioning it. So like this big ass coliseum mm -hmm. where everybody can stand over and watch and then people queue in, they fight, it ends, they queue out and they queue in the next one and you just keep going down the line until somebody's championed. And then obviously like the final match, you can change the lighting and stuff and like, yeah, you know, make it look more dramatic for the final fight, which would be pretty cool. So. That's cool. I, I like that. Yeah, that, I think that's probably what we're going to get. We'll, we'll figure out. We'll find out Thursday, and I can't wait to find out. Now, it's probably not the most crazy thing to predict that this mayoral system will be done in an instance based system. But, well, as it turns out, this instance based system is exactly what's going to happen. And what's really different and something that I did, 
I, I just could never predict is that citizens can back you in this candidacy. This sounds super cool. And I didn't really think so at first. And I could explain it, but I cannot do it justice. So I'll just play what Steven said here. And afterwards, I think I have a hot take on this system and how it sounds as is. Let's listen. Yes. So let, let me let me set the stage just real quick, because I don't think in the past we've talked about the potential of having um, uh, a uh, I think it was like a military champion and you could equip that champion and the champion would fight for you and you'd accumulate points. And that was kind of to to prevent the um, the, the strangeness between like the one v one scenario. But what we've decided is. Uh, <clears throat> that moving forward for military nodes, we will be implementing an election method that leverages the uh, ruined state of nodes as a PVP battleground, so to speak, in, in a form of an instance where citizens and or candidates can participate. And during the week, you will have a number of opportunities uh, to uh, participate in a timed event uh, where you can pledge your support to a candidate, or if you are a candidate, you will have objective-based gameplay within a windowed period of time within the node proper, and you will attempt to go to those objectives, execute the required uh, interaction, and you will accumulate points based off of your performance during those events. And at the end of those events, uh, overall, the highest point contributor will be elected the uh, mayor. Now, what that event entails is you as a citizen can pledge support and you will have open PVP within the node proper uh, that groups of those candidates and their pledged supporters can attempt to uh, secure and combat over the objectives over an hour period of time, perhaps a number of times a week. And then at the end of those events will be the election result. Um, that is the intent and desire behind this system. Um, I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be interesting. But obviously, the purpose of these demonstrations slash discussions is to give you guys an opportunity to give your thoughts, whether or not you think that's interesting, what you think could be improved, where are the areas where you would have concerns. Um, that's a really cool uh, update, I think, for the military nodes that you guys can can chat about. So, yeah, that really, really sounds super exciting. And Stephen wanted feedback, so I'd like to provide my thoughts here. I think this sounds fantastic, and I'd like to test the system as is. However, I wasn't a huge fan of this backing of a candidate style of system, simply because when I first envisioned military nodes and a military leader, I pictured him as being someone really good at PvP or just combat in general and someone that could really hold their own, really go into a free for all or battle royale environment and just be capable or tactical enough to win, you know, just someone really built different. However, the more I thought about it, this candidate system best plays into that military theme style. Who is the best general that can lead the best group? train and recruit the best soldiers, have the best group composition. The strongest people in the military aren't necessarily the bravest, most athletic Navy SEALsmen or soldiers. No, sometimes the most important people can be that general, that tactical mind, that person that's seen a lot of combat. The persons that know how to prepare for battle and lead their troops and make the right calls, make the right decisions. This is what makes a true and outstanding military node leader. Now, my only concern is just little small questions such as how many people can back a military leader? Will there be a cap on the backers that you can bring into this instance? Will it be four people, 10 people, 20 people? What are the stipulations in place for teams that are unbalanced? Can I pour into the instance with my 19 backers for a total of 20 people while the other guy who had only five backers, like, is that going to be a balanced fight? How many different candidates are there in one instance at a time? Is there going to be like four to five candidates and each of them with their own squads attempting to flip objectives or like, how would this go? Is there only going to be two different candidates in an instance at a time? If so, would this not like open things up to potential farming or collusion of these objective based points, thus making other teams throughout the week who compete? not be able to actually compete. These are my only concerns and potential improvements, and this will perhaps be, you know, answered in the article that comes out shortly or by Steven or Intrepid themselves. Also, with the re-election process being a thing, will this be something the military leader will have to go through each election cycle, or can it be the next cycle that the other players just go through a tournament with the same system, the same style, and the winner of that tournament then faces the current military leader? I think that could be a really cool idea. I think that's a system I'd like to see. Um, Steven or Intrepid, if you're listening to this, please let us know what the current plans are for the system as it sounds incredibly enticing, and I, for one, am excited for this note type. 
There was a ton of information we received this month in this live stream, but we have all month to discuss that here on the channel. And of course, we'll be discussing it tomorrow on the podcast. If you haven't already, please subscribe as we try to reach that 10K goal. Thank you guys so much for the support. We currently do live streams and content for the Ashes of Creation. And of course, my favorite Ashes of Creation waiting room, The Elder Scrolls Online. Thank you so much again to my channel members here in the next scene. Peace. Thank you.